So Mike Perez wins a 10 round unanimous decision over Magomed Abdusalamov. This was a good heavyweight fight. If you missed the fight, if you can find it anywhere on YouTube or Daily Motion or anywhere on the internet, it's actually worth a watch. This was a good heavyweight fight. Right out the gate, these two guys were going at it. I think that Abdu Salamov having this reputation as a puncher, I believe coming into the fight he was something like 18-0 with 18 KOs. Having this reputation as a puncher, he probably thought he could go in there and intimidate Mike Perez because Mike Perez doesn't have the KO record that Abdu Salamov has. So I think Abdu Salamov felt he could probably intimidate Mike Perez with his power. But Perez did what his countryman Guillermo Rigondeau did against Nonito Donaire in the early rounds and he stood his ground and he fought and he matched fire with fire you know he met fire with fire and he let Abdu Salamov know early it ain't that kind of party you know if you want to come at me you're going to get it right back and uh he won Abdu Salamov's respect in the early rounds Perez in the first round especially had the faster hands he was very sharp he was banging in good left hands body shots I thought he got the better of the first round maybe the first couple rounds but after that Abdu Salamov started picking up a few a few rounds, and to me it looked as though Perez might have burned up uh, a lot of his energy in the first couple of rounds because he was so intent on standing his crown, ground and getting Abdu Salamov's respect. It looked like he'd maybe burned himself out, but um, Abdu Salamov came on strong, uh, you know, in the following rounds. But I think then he he burned himself out because one thing he quickly discovered, and we all discovered in this fight is that Mike Perez seems to have a tremendous chin, right? <laughs> he, he took some really flush shots. And at times, he, he took consecutive punches from Abu Salamov. Yeah, I mean, like, three, four, five consecutive shots, he was taking flush punches, and he wasn't getting hurt. You know, <laughs> he wasn't getting hurt. Like, Mike Perez, if you ain't seen him before, he's a very, very thick-set heavyweight. You know, very thick set. I think he's around 6'1", 6'4", or 6'1", something like that. But he's very thick set, very, you know, just uh, thick set shoulders and, and chest and back muscles. A very thick set guy. And, um, you know, he looks like the kind of guy who could take a shot. And in this fight, he certainly showed that he could take a shot. And I think that Abdu Salamov maybe lost a little bit of, a little bit of um, heart when he, he literally hit Mike Perez with his best punches. And Mike Perez didn't go nowhere. He never really hurt him. And I think the, the key in this fight, you know, I thought Perez, got, you know, I picked Perez going into this fight. I thought he'd win the fight uh, on points. I think I picked him on points. Um, I thought that Perez would do a better job of just out slicking Abdi Salamov than he actually did. Now, Perez did seem to have the better skills, the better defense. He was moving his upper body and, you know, making Abdi Salamov miss. But he wasn't as slick as I anticipated. He did take more shots than I anticipated. You know, he did take more shots than I anticipated. But like I said, he was able to take the shots. No problem from Abdu Salamov. And I think that was actually one of the main differences. It wasn't so much just the, sli you know, just the slightly better defensive skills of Perez. I think it was also the fact that Perez was able to take Abdu Salamov's shots better than Abdu Salamov was able to take Perez's shots. Now, no one, no one got knocked down in the fight, but I felt that Abdu Salamov was more hurt at points during the fight than Perez ever was. I never thought Perez was really hurt at any point, maybe slightly buzzed once or twice, but I just felt that Perez took Abdu Salamov's shots a bit better. And um, towards the middle of the fight and down the home stretch, it was mostly Perez pushing Abdu Salamov around the ring, getting him on the ropes, landing uppercuts and hooks. And um, bossing the fight for the most part. But then in the ninth round, Perez landed a low blow and he had a point deducted. And um, I think he tried too hard to make up the point deficit and left himself open and Abdi Salamov started catching him. And I think the ninth round, you could have made a case for the ninth round being a two-point round for Abdi Salamov. Um, but then in the, in the 10th and final round, Perez came on strong again and he seemed to rock Abdu Salamov, I think with a big right hook. And it looked as though he might actually be able to get Abdu Salamov down or maybe even stop him. You know, so um in the end, Perez is, you know, slightly better defense, and I think he's better chin and maybe better punch selection, because he was going quite, you know, he was going quite well from head to body, switching up and down. Maybe his punch selection, you know, was slightly better. 
then uh, Abdu Salamov and um, you know overall I think the right guy won and uh, he marches on maybe to get a title shot with Vladimir Klitschko Klitschko was in the crowd so maybe he was scouting to see if uh, one of these guys could be a future opponent uh, all I can say about Mike Perez and you know I've, I've covered him for quite a long time uh, I've done a few videos on him um, as with most of these Cuban heavyweights Mike Perez can never seem to get himself in, in uh, tip-top condition. He's definitely in better condition than uh, Odlene Solis, but he's still not in the kind of condition you really want to see him in. It's funny, when he fought in prize fighter, because Mike Perez won prize fighter, and when he fought in prize fighter, he looked in much better condition than he was in this fight. <laughs> you know, which is kind of, kind of mad, you know, but I had a feeling at the time when he won prize fighter, you know, the, the, I believe the prize was like 35 grand. And I had a feeling that he'd probably go missing for a few months, not fight, and then turn up out of shape. You know, because that was obviously the biggest single payday of his career so far when he won prize fighter. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. He went missing for a few months and didn't fight and then turned up like 10, 15 pounds heavier than he was in prize fighter. And uh, here again in this fight, I thought he was too heavy. You know, I believe he was in the 230s. In, in this fight, it needs to be done in the low 220s. You know, for a guy that's only six feet tall, it needs to be in the low 220s, you know. And I thought he looked a lot more athletic and fast in prize fighter than he looked in this particular fight. So if he can get his weight down, he might be able to make some noise in the heavyweight division. I'm not going to say he's going to be able to beat a Klitschko, but if he can really get himself in good shape, he could definitely present an interesting challenge. So hit me up in the comment section. How did you feel about this fight? Um, entertaining heavyweight fight. If you ain't seen it, it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, so yeah, hit me up in the comments. Where do you think both of these fighters go from here? How do you see their futures in the heavyweight division going forward? So uh, yeah, this is Hatman. I'm out.